we're here in a coffee garden. Many of you may not know, but this is where your coffee comes from, from these little red cherries. Well, bad coffee comes from the green ones, actually, but that's what we're here to solve. The area we're in is Mount Elgon. It's in eastern Uganda. This place has a big potential because of the good climate that is in this area. The, the, farmers, the farmers have small land pieces, but the land is very productive. Mount Elgon is an extinct volcano, so it has volcanic soil, which is perfect for growing high quality Arabica coffee. The minerals in the soil and the other components of the soil, that produces a lot of complexity in the coffee, and it can give you this really intense, sparkling, black currant kind of acidity and really you know, intense fruitiness in the coffee. And so the potential for world-class, incredibly high quality coffee, you know, it, it's there. Uh, we just need to help the farmers unlock it to realize that potential. The judgment that we had collectively was that the farmers seem to have a clue on what can be done, but what is failing them to invest their time and interest in ensuring that we get the coffee that we want was market. We're working with farmers who are currently producing low-grade commodity coffee and receiving whatever price they can. You know, they're completely at the mercy of the market, of their local buyers, and for most of them isn't profitable. The whole purpose of what we do with specialty coffee in terms of which coffee we buy and the farmers that we represent, it's about helping people, uh, empowering people to pull themselves out of poverty. So what this project is trying to do is to try to build a specialty and high value coffee industry. Is every day if you can have a, uh, the evening before. This particular project is funded by the Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research. Now we are working on improving the quality of coffee and then how can we process some of the coffee as specialty coffee to give these farmers a premium price that can improve their livelihoods and income. We are looking at all the nodes through which coffee passes and all the actors that are touching it or using it or having business with it from the garden to the factories until it reaches the table. So every other person is doing something which is either adding quality or killing the quality. We have different actors of the value chain that don't trust each other because there's no transparency and in many cases they don't get you know, accurate information about what are the prices that they can get for different qualities of, co of coffee. So everybody is going to think that way and not have the incentive to adopt practices that might improve quality. A way to address this is having transparency along the chain. And this is as simple as giving information to everybody about prices, about the quality that is required, and so they understand and they know that that effort is not going to get lost. So that's how through Adelaide University we have an experiment to find out really what can stimulate them to actually spend time and pick the right red cherry that we want. Picking ripe red in terms of the quality you receive in the cup is one of the fastest, way to, fastest ways to improve the sweetness uh, in your coffee. A more complex coffee in the cup that has terroir. You know, one of the reasons that Monastery Coffee and other roasters like us pay a premium for higher quality coffee is because those coffees have unique characteristics, like really high quality wines do. So while we're doing this, the pickers pick red, they get more money, they work more days a week, the growers make more profit because they access a high value market and everyone wins. And then when it gets to the washing station, now we have some more times where the quality could be, points where the quality could be degraded. You know, so we're talking about fermentation practices, drying practices, you know, getting it off the ground, making sure it's turned a lot. So that, that financial incentive is again continuing through. So every step in the supply chain where quality could be degraded, we're lifting it back up. So this isn't about handing out money or just simply extension services. This is about groups of people coming together to try and jointly move to another level in terms of the value chain. This is our village office and we are proud of it. Uh, we think that we are going to start small and grow big. We are going to employ people, so people are going to get jobs. We don't want to be job seekers, but we want to be those who create jobs. This team has been able to tell us that you can earn more from these coffees that you have than the market that you may be supplying. 
they are carrying out a number of researches that identify ways of improving what the farmers have, give them the knowledge of why they need to do whatever they need to do, such that they come out with the best quality coffee. An impact which we think will come is increased incomes in households from the farms, from the processing centers, from the business people, and that will lift up the standards of living of Ugandans and especially women. Take for example, currently the price of cherries is at around 1,200 shillings per kilo of cherry and uh, they are doing an experiment where we shall have it at an increased price of around 2,000 shillings. The difference of 800 shillings can be put into savings. You can use the other monies to take, can, let's say, pay for school fees, and you are, you're safe, you live a happy life. And so far the initial testing's been really positive. It's been working, you know, aligning people's incentives, aligning the incentives of the buyers with the washing stations, with the growers, and with the pickers, where everyone sees the benefit of producing higher quality coffee and receiving a fair financial compensation for that. But that doesn't work if we can't keep that incentive moving up through the supply chain, all the way up to the roaster uh, in the end. We're testing to see if this buying program is effective in incentivizing everyone in the supply chain to produce high quality coffee. We think it's gonna be really great coffee. And so we're importing it at this stage just to Australia, but we're hoping to find a, a worldwide market as well, where we can then find a home for it. Uh, some roasters that can't wait to get their hands on the coffee. You can think about this all the way down the consumer as well, because if there's transparency and the consumer knows where the coffee is coming from, they trust that it's coming from this farm and that it's going to help these farmers to make a better life. The kind of added thing there that I'm really excited about, and this is one of the reasons I'm so excited to work with universities, is that we're getting data from that. You know, it's a research project. So we've got different treatments. We're seeing what's effective, what's not effective. And, you know, there'll be reports about that um, that are freely available for other people to learn from this experience, you know, so we can replicate the successes we might have, that we will be having, I'm confident. Um, on the ground here, that can be replicated in other situations similar to this within Uganda, but also outside of it.